What does Pikachu, Winnie the Pooh, and Transformers have in common? Can you use a simple secret to skyrocket your self-publishing IP? Do you want to learn from a brand worth over a billion dollars on how to dominate your lane? Do you want to learn from the people at the top, from the legends? What I noticed is that they were a category king in a specific category. Can you guess what that category is? I'll give you a guess. It's big. It's, it's very important. Hey kings and queens, welcome to another episode of Elevate with E. It's E here, Yuwarni Hughes, CEO of Great Gale and the manga cup Afro Future the Manga Series Bold Saga where we rewrite the narrative. And this is a podcast aimed at helping you elevate over the limits life throws at you again. Welcome back to the Elevate with E podcast. Super excited. Oh, you do not know how excited I am because today, today we are covering something I've wanted to talk about for the longest while. And it is called, it is called, there we are, the Pokemon model. Again, the Pokemon model. This is for all of the authors, for all of the entrepreneurs, for anyone that wants to get into creating their own self published book series. This is one of the most critical 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 episodes you need to see of the LD with the podcast because look man pokemon is big and i want to help you learn from these model this pokemon model and use it to benefit your intellectual property your book series your business it's so incredible so impactful and again i love pokemon because of the fact i've been playing it since a kid like as you can see i got pokemon pearl version got this from my cousin oh it is Pokemon is just in a league of its own. That's why I'm super excited to talk about it today because when you learn what the Pokemon model is and how it can benefit you, oh my gosh. Ah, it's going to be so exciting. Okay, so what are Pokemon? So you see the cover, you see the Pokemon model. You got this red thing in the back. You got this blue thing on the right. And you got this yellow thing in the center. Well, those things are Pokemon, you know. And can you tell what the yellow one is? I'll give you a guess. All right. That is, as you know, Pikachu. Pikachu is one of the most timeless characters from Pokemon. That's Ash's, um, the first Pokemon that he partnered with when he was in the Indigo League. And what Pokemon are, they're cute, cool pocket monsters that range in size and fierceness. Pokemon connects people across the globe and are beloved by kids, adults, and every trainer in between. So again, they're beloved, beloved by kids, Adults and every trainer in between. Look at that. Look how cute it is. Look how unassuming it is. Oh, it's so fun. It's just like a nice, cute little thing. And then the best part is that because it's so cute, it's so simple, kids love it. The parents love it because they think it's something great for the kids. The kids can just draw it so they feel like they're part of you know the series, all that type of stuff. And what I love is that Pokemon is a phenomenal intellectual property created by Satoshi Tejiri. Again, Satoshi to Jerry and his team. So again, that's Pikachu. And then the next slide, we got the rest. So that's the starting squad you got on the far left. You got Bulbasaur, you got Pikachu, you got Charizard, and then you got Squirtle. So that's the starting four. It's really three starters and then Pikachu is there as the other option. But yeah, this is where it all begins. And this is what we're gonna be talking about, the Pokemon model. This is the model that I have learned from what they have done. And I believe, and I know that it can help you when you're self-publishing your book series, when you're creating your own fantasy series, or as a business owner. And what we're going to be talking about, it's not just Pokemon only, it's the Pokemon model. And what is a model? A system or thing used as an example to follow or imitate. Models are what help you win. People say this foolishness about good artists copy, great artists steal. That's nice until you get hit with copyright infringement. What is more important is if you model something. And I'm going to show you at the end. So stick around to the end and I'll show you exactly how to apply the Pokemon model. And why is this so important? Pokemon is number one in a specific category. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. But again, modeling is so important because as you self-publish, as you create, as you want to elevate over the challenges life throws at you, you want to get into focusing and focusing and focusing on models. You don't want to just get caught up in just trying to steal what other people have done. You want to focus on models. And this is what we're going to show you because we want to help you elevate because this year, our theme for the Elevate With You podcast, our theme is all about momentum. That's the 2023 
theme, it's all about momentum. It's not about being stuck in the past or anything like that. We're all about moving forward now. Because last year was about winning, and winning is important. It's so important to win. You need to win. You need to get to that point where life is not just punking you or just throwing you around. You fight back, overcome the challenges, the limits life throws at you, and you win. But winning alone is not enough because who wants to win once in life and then the rest of your life is failures? No. What you want is momentum. What you want is that momentum that continuously allows you to keep winning, to keep going, and to keep winning, and to keep going no matter what life throws at you, you continuously win. This is what it's all about, and this is why 2023's theme is momentum. Yes, the year's halfway through, but that's all right because there's still time on the clock. There's still time to get your momentum back. There's still time to continuously move with momentum because this is your time, kings and queens. This is your season. So, Again, this is about the Pokemon model. And what I love about Pokemon is when I did my research while I was working on the Seven Steps book, um, which is Seven Steps to Creating a Dream Manga Series. We'll show that later. But what I noticed is that they were a category king in a specific category. Can you guess what that category is? I'll give you a guess. It's big. It's, it's very important, especially for business. All right, here it is. Pokemon is number one. I want to be the very best that no one ever was. Well, it's not just Ash that became, you know, the Pokemon Grandmaster. Pokemon is in a league of its own. It is worth over $90 billion. And this was as of 2018, 2019, when this um, statistic was put together by Title Max. The top 25 highest grossing media franchises of all time, of all time. Top 25 media franchises of all time. Why does that matter? Look, man, this is the future, okay? Media franchising is where you want to go with your business, where you want to go with the intellectual property, where you want to go with self-publishing. And we're going to be talking about so much more in a moment. But again, top 25, Pokemon is one. Not Mickey Mouse, not Harry Potter, you know, not Toy Story or anything else like that. Not even Yu-Gi-Oh! It's Pokemon. And we're going to be discussing later on just how integral this Pokemon model is because it can take you to the top when you use it properly. So, again, that was as of 2018, 2019 when that statistic came up. And then this is years later, May 24th, 2023. This is on Market Watch. The top 25 highest grossing media, franchise, media franchises in the world for entertainment. Yes, for entertainment. So I'm telling you. This is incredible. Guess what came number one? Yes, it's Pokemon. They're still number one. They didn't just go to 90 billion and then Hello Kitty passed them. No, because as you can see, Hello Kitty was like 80 billion. No, they went from 92 billion to 105 billion. Oh my gosh. That's crazy, man. And it's just going to keep going and going and going and going and going. Because they have momentum. And that's what I'm telling you, kings and queens, get your momentum. Get to one, because once you get to one, anything else is possible. I'm super excited. Again, this is the number one highest grossing media franchise in the world for entertainment. Pokemon is number one. And as they say on Market Watch, you've heard this one, right? Haven't you? Started in 1996, or starting in 1996, Pokemon has grossed a whopping $105 billion. 105 billion. It all began with a simple idea inspired by its creator, Satoshi Tajiri's childhood love for collecting bugs. Pokemon game ROMs, movies, trading cards, and the iconic TV series have taken over the world, leaving fans craving more. You want to leave your fans craving more, kings and queens. You can't just do that if you're trying to sell socks or, you know, sandwiches and things like that in and of itself without the taste of the flavor. But if you can create a media franchise around what you're doing, around what you're creating, you create a captive audience that wants to come back again and again and again and again and again. So this is the power of a media franchise. That's why Pokemon is number one. They beat Mickey. Mickey Mouse. So as it's crazy. Mickey Mouse, which as you know, is from Disney. That started in 1928. It's almost 100 years later. They're still doing good. I'll give them that. $70 billion. But, and this was as of 2018, 2019. But they're not doing Pokemon good. Pokemon passed them in a quarter of the time. And that's the power of when you have a media franchise. You can take over Juggernauts when you have a media franchise in place. 
So again, the top 25 media franchises of all time. It's not Mickey. It's not Harry Potter. It's not Spider-Man. Pokemon is number one. That is why I want to share with you this Pokemon model because it can help you go from where you are to where you need to be. And you may be asking, well, why does this, why am I even talking about media franchises if we're talking about the Pokemon model? Like, what does this have to do with self publishing and entrepreneurship? It has everything to do with it because every title you see from Pokemon, which is number one to the last thing on the list, Transformers, they are all media franchises and they are all businesses. They're not just OCs, you know, they're not just ideas. These are copyrighted, trademarked, protected IPs. Again, copyrighted, trademarked, protected IPs. And an IP is an intellectual property. We even discussed this with Eric Pelton of Eric Pelton and Associates in the Manga Just Live course. So if you haven't gotten to that, you know, click the links below and you can get the link to that because we talk with an actual trademark lawyer about how to trademark an intellectual property, how to trademark a series. So that's super profound. You need to see it. So again, it's not just about having an idea and sharing the IP and you know, telling people about your big idea. I remember I went to a networking event at one point, and I appreciate where the speaker was coming from in that context, but it doesn't hold true for every context because he's saying, basically, when you have an idea, you can just talk to people. Don't be afraid. People are going to steal your idea, share it with them, and then get the word out. We'll talk about later how this ties into the Pokemon model, but you don't want to share your seed with everyone because you don't want to cast your pearl before swine. You don't want to waste time expending your energy to explain the validity of your idea to someone who may or may not care or could be a wolf. I remember what Aletha Martinez said. She said, if you want to hunt, look how the big dogs hunt. Study how the big dogs hunt. It's the same thing that Derek Grace too said. Study how the big dogs hunt. Study the big dogs, the people at the top of the business chain, the top of, this is why I went to Title Max, and this is why I went to Market Watch to actually get to the statistics. It's not about the studying Eichiro Oda or, you know, Simon and Schuster or Penguin, you know, publishing or anything like that. Study the top of the top of the top, because that's how you get to the next level, and then look at what they did, and then model. Model is emulating what someone did, not copying word for word, but you look at what they did and then you apply it in your own way, in your own style, with your own creativity. You don't got to reinvent the wheel, but you do need a model. You don't just want to just do things the hard way. A model lets you do things the smart way. So again, back to this. It's all about making sure that you own your IP, not just talking, not just sharing it, owning the IP. So we've all been taught this lie. I mean, people say it's the truth, but it's a lie that's been told so long people believe it's true. Time is money. This is a lie that keeps you broke. Now, why would I say time is money is a lie that would keep you broke? Well, again, put a big X. Anytime you hear anyone say time is money in your mind and your thoughts, always put the big X over it. Why? Here's a simple example. Would you accept a million dollar check from me you want to use today? Would you? If the answer is yes, then stick around to this next part. Because I have one stipulation. If I give you this $1 million check, your life has to end in the next minute. Now, if you took that check and said you still want it, and you would forfeit your entire life for a million dollars, well, that's just something crazy. Because everyone else that's listening to this will come to the same conclusion. They'd say no. They would say no. They would say no in less than a millisecond. Why? Well, if you were to get the money but lose your life, which is time, then you have no way to expend the money. It's not going to go to you. It's going to go probably to the government or someone else. You are getting nothing and losing everything. So this is why time is not money, because time is infinitely more valuable than money. Again, time is infinitely more valuable than money infinitely more. Every day that you wake up is worth more than $100 billion. Why? You get another chance to live your life, to focus and chase your dreams, to write your self-published book, to work at your dream job, or to work in a job that you don't like that's giving you the funds to get to that dream job, to get to your releasing of your dream product, your dream manga, your dream video game, whatever it is that your dream and your purpose is, living it out, living a life where you 
actually are living your dreams, finishing your goals, getting the job done. That's the benefit of having more time. See, it's a funny thing, but it's so true. You can hear people talk about they run out of money. You have overdraft in your bank account, and this, that, and the third. But one thing that's crazy is if you run out of time, that's it. The game is over. And life is a game where you don't see the clock. No one knows how much time they have left. I don't care what they put in Death Note when he took that ability from um, Ryuk, when you could see how long people have left on their life. That's, that's an anime. In the real world, though, you can't see how much time you have left. So this is why you have to realize time is infinitely more valuable than money. Again, this is about getting your attention to help you realize this. You cannot overestimate the meaning of money without looking at the value of time. So even if, and this is why I put it in red as attention, even if you have time, what's even more valuable than time is attention. Because what you've heard people say pay attention so many times, right? When you pay attention, that's how you get paid. Even if I took a course and watched 100 minutes of it, and that's the entire course, if it was 100 minutes long, but I didn't pay attention the entire time, I've wasted my money. And I've wasted my time. So I really wasted my time and my money. So you want to give attention to what matters. Where focus goes, energy flows. Money flows and so much more. Even Bishop T.D. Jake said, when I'm focused, I'm fire. That same flashlight, when it's focused, down and it's concentrated, it can become a laser that can pierce things. The same thing with water. Water that flows through a stream when it's pressurized can crack rocks. So this is why you need to get your focus back. You need to get your attention back. Grab your attention back. Focus on the things that you want to help you get to the next level, that you know can help you get to the next level. That thing that you've been running from, you don't like to write, so you don't want to write. Put some attention on it because you know and you know exactly what I'm talking to. You know that you've been called to write. You have to do it. Same thing with drawing hands. If you have a fear of drawing hands, you have to do it. You have to find systems in place that can help you do it. I've had a fear of drawing hands. I have had a fear of writing. <laughs> I've had a fear of creating covers for books. And as you can see right here, we don't just have one or two or three. We got four books physically. And we have another and there's nine, 13 books in total that we've self-published in the last five years because we're not playing. We are all about momentum and we want to help you do the same. So again, where focus goes, energy flows. Give attention to what matters. Don't just focus on, you know, all the foolishness that you see on the internet, the twerking videos, the cat videos, all this other stuff. That's basic. That's average. That's noise. When you have attention and you focus that attention, you cut through the noise. That's what I did last year when everything was crazy in my life. I focused, I put my attention on it, and I got 52 books read. Oh, it was so good. My mind was just transforming. And, you know, you get transformed by the renewing of your mind, by reading the word. I'm telling you, it's so important to have a strong mind when you get into self-publishing. And this ties back into the Pokemon model in just a second. But, again, you want to have your attention. Because when you have and um, what you give attention to will either make you a multimillionaire who is living their dreams or another worker paid less to help a business make more, live their dreams, and take care of their family for generations. So it's quite simply this. When you're working, right, what you put your attention on is either going to give you assets, and skill sets, and tool sets, and mindsets that will provide wealth for you and your family, or you will be investing all of your time watch this, all of your time to get a little bit of someone else's money because they know something. The bosses and every other person that has a business that has workers work for them, employees know this. They know their time is more valuable than the money that they make, which is why they pay people less money to work these jobs and do different levels of work so that they can get more of their time back. You, that's what's called buying your time back. You hire people out. You know, I know that there's um, four hour work week has talked about it, um, outsourcing, who not how, finding the right person, which is nice. But at one point or another, you're going to have to learn skills. So change your mindset, grow. And it's even Dan Henry mentioned it and statistics have shown it. Even Professor Kesson mentioned it as well. Anytime you work at a job for longer than two years and you don't change the job to a different job, what happens is that you're actually making less money over time because of inflation. So I know you want to hear about the Pokemon model. This is all tying back into it. And this is why you need a media franchise. Because again, inflation is going to happen. So you want to have your money accelerate and have more momentum over the drag that is inflation, over the drag that is, you know, outside 
factors and issues and situations. So what I want to let you know next is this. If you want to get assets, if you want to save more time, if you want to actually go to the next level and actually go from just an idea to an actual book, we created this guide to help you. How to self-publish your dreams in 10 steps. This quick start guide is free. You heard it, free, not just free 99, free, F-R-E-E. Get this guide. It's going to help you go from where you are to where you need to be. If you're stuck and you don't understand what self-publishing is, this guide is for you. If you started your book and maybe you got lost along the way, this book is for you because we're here to help you get your time back, you know, secure the bag and get more wealth as well as have your focus, have your attention back because getting your first book done is going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot. Your first dream product, your first dream product, you know, the one that you're putting your entire life on, the one that you really love, it's going to take a lot. So that's why we created this book to get your feet wet. That's why there's so much water at the blue to calm you down. It's to get you into what is self-publishing. So again, how to self-publish your dream in 10 steps, this quick start guide. Go from zero to professional author with these 10 powerful principles. Get your free copy, bit.ly forward slash 10 steps book dash QS. Again, bit.ly forward slash 10 steps book dash QS. All right, now let's continue. Saving alone isn't the best path to wealth. It's not. It's not. That's just what life is. So what you want to do is don't get caught up in the risks that happen because inflation is going to happen. Outside factors are going to happen. Who would have thought 2020 would have turned out like that? You know, looking back in hindsight, who would have thought, you know, clear vision. That's what we heard, you know, 2020 sight, clear vision. But like a lot of crazy things happen. Life is all about change. You know, nothing is permanent except change. Like Dr. Eric Thomas said. So don't get caught up in the stress of, you know, this is rising or the cost of this is rising. The cost of that is rising. Your goal, and I encourage you to do this, is to find systems that help you make more, to secure more wealth so you can provide for you, your family, and everyone else. So saving alone is not the best path. Instead, create more assets. And there's no better way to create more assets than to have a media franchise. I'm telling you, kings and queens, when you have a media franchise, it changes the game. Because again, It's a media franchise. And even Tom Foremsky said this, every company today must be a media company. Now, why would he say such a thing? Every company today must, not maybe, not kind of, must be a media company? I'll explain. Up to 11 hours is how much they estimate. According to Nielsen, people consume media each day, up to 11 hours consuming media each day. We're talking about going on Instagram, going on TikTok, when you're in between breaks at your job, when you go to the bathroom, you know, watching YouTube videos, you know, going on Snapchat, whatever app that you're using, you know, watching ads that you can't skip because you didn't get the um, upgrade to remove the ads, whatever it is, you're encountering media, you're encountering noise. You know, this is why it's good to have attention because when you focus your attention, you're able to cut through the noise, especially when you're creating a brand message, especially when you're talking about your products, your IP, you know, your unique selling points, your USPs, all of those things. You want to make sure you have a brand architecture. You want to make sure you have the structure in place. So when you're talking about what it is that you're talking about, you're piercing this veil of just noise, 11 hours consuming media each day. That's a lot of content. So again, This is the benefit of having great content. So many people realize the value of having great content because your great content is an asset. It's an asset that works for you. This is why you see, you know, multimillionaires like Alex Hormozzi say media should not be seen as an investment. Media should be seen as an investment, not an expense. You'll see Russell Brunson say, you know, routine builds achievement. Again, routine builds achievement. And then Dr. Maren Golan talk about four moves to millions. These are all entrepreneurs. These are all entrepreneurs who, to a degree, are a media company at this point. You see them on YouTube. You see them on, you know, Twitter. You'll see them, you know, on TikTok, on Instagram, all over the place. Why? Because they want to have omni-channel presence. They want to be everywhere. And there's no better way to be everywhere than than having media. Because what you do is you give yourself the opportunity to be found. The goal is to be found, not just trying to shout and say, buy my toy, buy my product, buy my book, this, that, and the third. That's nice and all, but if people don't know, like, and trust you, they're not going to buy from you. We talk about this in the Seven Steps books on a further depth, further in depth. We can't go over all of it in a YouTube video. You don't want to be here for seven years. 
it's, it's a lot that can go into these topics. So we're just covering just what you need to know. So again, how does this tie all the way back into Pokemon? You know, millions and the entrepreneurship and, you know, Nielsen and statistics. How does this even tie back into the Pokemon model? And there they are. They look so cute and happy. Oh, got Pikachu, Bulbasaur, Char... Um, not Charizard. Squirtle and, oh, come on, a Charmander. Oh, if I didn't remember that, the 90s version of me as a child would be so mad. But yes, Pokemon is a media franchise. So what is media? Media means entertainment and your content provider. Media franchise, though, means a collection of related media in which several derivative works have been produced from an original creative work of fiction, such as film, a work of literature, a television program, or a video game. This is the benefit of when you have a media franchise. And look, I'm telling you, right now, Old Saga is going to become a media franchise. Who knows? Maybe it'll be the best of all time. Only God knows. But at the end of the day, it's this. The benefit of having a media franchise is this. I got one book here. Now, this one book, when you allow it to expand, can become merch like this hat that I'm wearing. I literally have a shirt on that says, you know, Bold Saga Rise Up. It can become, you know, this banner back there, if I want to sell it to franchise it out to other people, you get locations, that's an option, you know, making pins, making audiobooks, making video games. All of these are inside of the multimedia, this media franchise, this transmedia model. All of this is possible. But this is why you need to get started on getting your first one done because I was even talking to someone that's interested in making video games and I brought it to the attention of them that a lot of people want to get into making their own products, their own dream things, their own dream product, their manga, their, their video game. It's the first one they've ever done. And we believe this, this lie that if you build it, they will come. I will let you know, kings and queens, that is a complete lie. The reality is this. If you build an audience, they will be ready to invest. You want to bring people along on the journey, but you want to make sure that you're ready. You don't want to tell people about your IP until you protected it. That's, that's just business. There's two rules of business. One, never tell everyone, never tell people everything. That's it. There is no second rule. Never tell people all that you know. Why? Because you always want to not just be shrewd. I've been watching Suits recently with my wife. It allows me to think so much differently in a business perspective. But yeah, not the lying and bad-mindedness, but like shrewdness, how you speak, how you're able to communicate because it's four levels of value. The highest is imagination. The lowest is implementation. Having a media franchise helps you to go with momentum and get to the top of the ladder, get to the top of the mountain. Because a lot of people like to stay at the bottom. That's where all the competition is. You know, I got this AI art that could do AI art and talking and animation. Well, I got this AI art that, you know, mine is, you know, seven bucks. Okay, but I got the AI art one that's, you know, six dollars and it can do this, this, that, and then five and then four. It's a race to the bottom. Because it's a funny thing. People never expect the cheapest to be the best and people never expect the best to be the cheapest. Be premium value, kings and queens. Get a media franchise. Get started on one now, kings and queens. Don't wait until it's I don't think it's ever fully saturated. I think a lot of people are in a lot of red oceans and they don't know it. There's a book by um, W. Chan Kim called Blue Ocean Strategy, where he says, I don't compete with my competition. I make them irrelevant. This is the benefit of reading that. It changes your mind. Oh my gosh. I don't compete with my competition. I make them irrelevant. When you're in your blue ocean, you don't have to worry about that. Get to a blue ocean, kings and queens. You see Pokemon? Pokemon is a blue ocean. They're not, a, you see that? Look at that. They're a blue ocean. There we go. A blue ocean. They're not no red ocean. They're not trying to fight like, you know, someone else's thing or they're trying to hop on someone else's, you know, style. Like Shin Megami Tensei may have been the first, you know, monster catching game. They didn't call this Shin Megami Tensei's with an S or, you know, mm, Arashi Megami Tensei or something like that. No, they made their own thing. They made Pokemon. Even the name, but that's another topic for another day. We go deeper on this Pokemon model in other facets that we talk about later. But again, and stick to the end because we're going to be showing you how to apply the Pokemon model. This is a multi-billion dollar franchise. And with this model, applying it can change your business, your intellectual property, your book series, your video game. Oh my gosh, it's so powerful. So again, this is Pokemon. It is such an amazing, amazing, amazing genre. And what I loved about it is that I grew up on Pokemon. I remember watching when I was a kid. I remember seeing, you know, different Pokemon characters like 
you know, on the far left is Brock, in the center is Ash, on the far right is Misty, and they got a Togepi in their hand. I remember watching a Pokemon show. I remember playing the games. I used to, you know, when I was a kid in New Covenant, I loved the idea of Pokemon. I was not a fan of when my friends would go outside and try and act like a Pokemon and be like, you know, Mankey and Hitmonlee and like fighting in the streets and pretending to be Pokemon. I had time for that. That always seemed foolish to me. What I did like, though, was the game. The game was cool. The anime was cool. You know, the card games were cool. And what I liked is they had always had this like childlike innocence to it. It wasn't like people are like, getting decapitated or cut in half and all that other stuff, which we'll talk about later, the benefits of using that. But again, it's quite simply this. When you look at Pokemon, it's friendly. It's charming. It's simple. It's beautiful. It's beautiful in its simplicity. So that's the benefit, kings and queens. You want to get to the point where you're creating more and more and you're getting to a media franchise. You don't have to copy Pokemon unquote exactly what Pokemon did, but knowing this model can change everything. Oh, and I remember back in the day, Pokemon was the big thing. It was just, I still have the Pokemon Pearl. I was just playing a couple of days ago. Uh, I was having so much fun playing Pokemon Pearl. I was at the part where I was going against the Elite Four. I already beat them, but I wanted to go back again and see if I could wash them a second time, you know, <laughs> spin cycle. <laughs> but um, it was exciting. It was exciting to me. And I just love it because you know, sometimes you hear something blow up in the past and then it like fades or fizzles like Digimon, which is super big. And then it kind of, uh, which is strange because you would think this would be the Digimon um, model since we're in a digital world right now with the AIs and the technology and all this other advancing technology. You would think it'd be Digimon, but it's actually Pokemon is number one. So again, you want to learn from the people at the top, from the legends. So what I love about Pokemon is just they're just in their own lane. According to Pokemon, and these are the games, you got Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Yellow, Pokemon Green. Ah, oh. and then these are the evolved forms. Pikachu in his own swag, he didn't want to change. But you got you know Charizard, you know, you got Blastoise, you got Venusaur. Or is that Ivysaur? I think that's Ivysaur. No, no, it's Venusaur, it's Venusaur, and it's Pikachu. Who didn't evolve into a Raichu because of reasons. But yeah, that was on the Game Boy back in the day. If you know Game Boy, that was the thing. But this is what I love about Pokemon again. Their mission and their headline, the first thing you see, bringing the world together through Pokemon. How can you create your products, your IP, your books, your business? How can you bring people together? I know a lot of times in media and other things, we see things that pull us apart, you know, separate us and sectarianism and, you know, shifting into partisan views you know you're on this side or that side you know this side and the third to split people apart but how can you bring people together how can you bring people together on a common ideal with bold saga what we do is when we talk about bringing people together we're talking about helping you to overcome about underdogs rising this story about empowering you encouraging you to seize greatness so you have to find a way to simplify use an economy of words don't just Blither on for like 50 years, use an economy of words. Look at what they talk about with Pokemon. This is their mission. The world of Pokemon connects people around the globe, beloved by kids, adults, and every trainer in between. These incredible creatures have crossed borders and language barriers to reach the hearts and minds of millions for over 25 years, bringing people together through the joy of play and discovery. This is the benefit of when you actually create your actual system, your actual intellectual property the right way. And Pokemon's one of the best examples of it. And what I just showed was the actual person who created Pokemon. It was Satoshi Tajiri. Again, if you've never seen the creator of Pokemon, that's him right there. That's Satoshi Tajiri. He is the creator of Pokemon. He's a pioneer. He's a go-getter. He is so phenomenal. Just, this is where we get into the deeper story of the creator because we talked about the product. Now we're going to talk about the creator for a moment because it's all tied into the Pokemon model. So again, you may have wondered how even Pokemon got started. Well, we're going to talk about that in a moment. So again, this is the creator of Pokemon, um, Satoshi Tajiri. He's a pioneer, the creator of Pokemon, a go-getter. But did you know? Did you know that he was on the autism spectrum? And not was, is on the autism spectrum. Yes, Satoshi Tajiri is a high-functioning autistic. So for anyone who is watching this and facing autism or any disorder or any challenge life throws at you, know that they can be used to propel you forward, to propel you to the next level, 
Don't let your limits limit you. Find a way to overcome like Satoshi did. He turned what he was going through and allowed it to benefit him for life. I'm telling you, this is incredible. So what we're going to be talking about next is this. The story of Satoshi Tajiri. I got this from theartofautism.com. So this is basically how Satoshi Tajiri's autism helped him create Pokemon. I know before the tons of games, TV shows, manga adaptions, toys, merch, all that stuff, all that stuff, it was first just an idea. And what is interesting is that um, Satoshi was born in Tokyo in 1965. He had many obsessions, especially collecting bugs and arcade games as a teen. He loved games so much, it caused him to cut classes to flunk high school. So for anyone that's had an issue where they flunked, you know, they failed the test, don't let it get to you. Even if you repeated a grade, don't let it get to you. Even when you repeated a class, don't let it get to you. Even if you're behind on your studies, don't let it get to you to the point that it breaks you down because we all have our um, hangups, we all have our challenges, but it's all about how you react determines how you overcome, MC Jin. Again, how you react determines how you, not me, how you overcome. So his parents didn't understand his obsession. They thought he was a delinquent. They thought he'd end up throwing his whole life away. However, Satoshi made up for this by taking makeup classes and got his high school diploma. He even went to the Tokyo National College of Technology for a while, where he studied computer science and electronics. However, he wasn't done with his video game session. Now, many times in life, our parents want us to take the simple and the safe route. They want us to be secure. And I understand that they're parents because as a parent, you love your child. And our brains are wired for security. They're wired for safety. They're not wired for risk. Risk, risk requires faith. It requires belief. It requires grit. It requires resilience. So your parents not seeing what you see, that's okay. If they're living on the, you know, the lane of average or the realm of average, that's fine because that's where they choose to be. But if you want to seize greatness and go to the next level, I challenge you to be like Satoshi. He never gave up on his obsession. Again, he never gave up on his obsession. At the age of 17, this is so cool, he started writing and editing a fan magazine. It focused on the arcade game scene and was called, guess what it was called? Now, when I found this out, I was like, really? Because I always wondered, why do I always see this logo every time I turn on a Pokemon game or see any of the ads or anything like that? The name of his magazine was called Game Freak. And as any Pokemon fan who's played the game, watched the animes, or seen anything like that, you've probably seen this logo at least once before. Well, this is how it got started. Game Freak is actually his magazine. Yes, Satoshi created a magazine. He called it Game Freak. So again, this is so crazy. Okay, why, why am I freaking out even now? And I already wrote the show notes and everything. Satoshi Tajiri, the creator of Pokemon, multi billion dollar intellectual property number one media franchise he's worth 10 million dollars he started with what self-publishing one of the most powerful video games in the planet for the last 20 plus years and is still killing it is a intellectual property that started as a magazine as a magazine, kings and queens, as a magazine. So this is what I'm telling you, kings and queens, all the entrepreneurs that are watching this, all of the coaches, all of the consultants, all of the, you know, mangakas, all of the fantasy writers, whatever it is, get into self-publishing. I'm telling you, it can change everything. We are, I'm a self-publishing coach. I've done it 13 times and want to help you do the same. So stick until the end. We'll talk about an opportunity for you that's available to help you go to the next level as well as click the um, links below. We'll have something for you as well. But stick to the end because we'll tell you exactly what it is. But again, this is crazy to me. I, I, it just clicked. He was a self-publisher. He created his own magazine. He didn't wait for someone to tell him, hey, you should make Game Freak or this, that, and the third. He made his own magazine. Oh, thank you, God. This is such insight. So that's the benefit. When you self-publish, it allows you to change the game. So uh, again, for all the video game creators as well, Getting into publishing can help you change everything. I mean, yes, it worked for him. Maybe it may not work for everyone, but it's still the aspect of you need a way to build an audience. And one of the best ways to build an audience and to get the word out about what you are and your ideas and, you know, your mission statement and everything you believe in value is reading, is writing. Because people may not trust what you say directly, but they will trust if you have a book. 
Books allow you to become an expert. Satoshi was an expert. He kept making books. He kept making magazines. He talked about what was going on around him, you know, but then he talked about in his mind, he had the ideas and he's like, I got to do something about it. Yes. So Game Freak is the one that creates all the Pokemon games. So how did he go from just a small magazine or let me not say small, a fan magazine for that matter to a game powerhouse? How did he do it? Hey, kings and queens, if this video truly helped you, smash the subscribe button, turn on notification, and share it with a friend who needs to hear it. And stay tuned for the Pokemon model part two, just one click away. Until next time, keep winning, kings and queens.